All right, we're diving more into specific tests of Volterra. This is the hardware box from Microsoft. It runs Windows for ARM. It's an ARM box. And we also have an ARM box here, ARM base box, Apple Silicon Mac Mini. I'm gonna compare these two. Well, you say, oh, Alex, you can't compare those two. It's not fair. Well, it depends what you're comparing. Over the next few days, I'll be comparing compilation times on Windows for ARM. This one runs Windows for ARM natively on metal. This one, the Mac Mini, runs Windows for ARM via Parallels. So right here, I have a virtual environment. It looks like it's running Windows. I can exit full screen, and now you'll see that I'm inside Parallels. I had many videos on Parallels here on this channel. Basically, it's a virtualization software that allows you to virtualize Windows and run Windows virtually. How many times am I gonna say virtually? I don't know. But it's virtually impossible to tell that I'm running Mac OS when I have this maximized because it's so smooth. Windows for ARM works really well. I have Visual Studio on there. I've tried Visual Studio Code to do some Python projects and JavaScript projects. Today, however, I want to kick things off by doing some web tests. This relates mostly to web developers and maybe those folks that are doing ASP.NET as well, since your stuff will end up on the web. How will Volterra do against a virtualized environment running on Apple Silicon? Let's find out. And then in a few subsequent videos, I'll also be doing some .NET compilations, Python, and so on. So do subscribe if you want to see those. Whatever the result will be, there is a couple of differences here. First of all, this is Microsoft's first ARM machine and it's geared towards developers. So the audience is a little bit different here. The Apple machine is geared towards everybody, developers and consumers. And they did have a developer kit for their Apple Silicon ecosystem come out before they released this one. This is the M1 Mac mini with eight gigabytes. It's the base model. They had one that they released in 2020 that was for developers and they had an A chip in it, not an M series chip, an A series chip taking from uh, the iPhones. So this is comparing two different classes of machines. They are both desktop machines. They're both very small. Let's get on with it, shall we? Usually I use Chrome, but today I'm going to use Edge. And the reason for that is, well, Edge supports Windows for ARM natively and Chrome does not. However, Edge is built on the Chromium engine and it offers some of the same developer tools that Chrome does. So it's a really nice alternative on Windows for ARM. Now, typically I would actually record my screen through my little screen recorder there, but I can't do that now because, well, the Volterra supports three external monitors at the same time, which is cool, but the Mac mini does not. The Mac mini only supports one monitor. So I got to use this camera to show you the results. We're going to kick things off with speedometer two and let's go. This is the fun bit with the flashing. We'll see who finishes this first. Who's it going to be? Oh, I think the Mac mini is a little bit ahead now. Wow, it's done. Now remember, <laughs> this is the score inside a virtual machine on the Mac mini and we got 191. That's pretty good. Here we got 150. So both of them are running edge for ARM, same versions of everything. We got 150 on the Volterra box and we've got 191 in a virtual machine on the Mac mini. The next test is also a browser bench test and this one is called Jetstream. Now what's different about Jetstream is that uh, Jetstream actually uses not only JavaScript frameworks but WebAssembly. For those of you that are not familiar with Jetstream 2, it rewards browsers that start up quickly, execute code quickly and run smoothly. I like all those things. Let's kick it off. There we go. It's running. Now while browser bench is running, you're going to get an output of uh, each one of the tests that it runs, you can actually click on those and uh, drill into the details of what each test is, how it's executing and what it's measuring and so on. By the way, during the browser test, while it's still executing, we're using 11.5 watts of power on the Volterra box. It's ranging from 11 to 12 on Mac mini, so about the same. Now, if we were to compare just the uh, temperatures to the touch, this is aluminum, of course, so it does feel cool. This one is plastic, it feels warm, but uh, I wouldn't say either one of them is hot. We're just interested in the overall final score here. Okay, we've got our results for Jetstream and Volterra gets a score of 165. 165.9, this also breaks down what each test got. I'm not gonna go into that much detail this time around, but if you are interested, let me know. Now, the Mac Mini got a score of 182, again, in a virtual machine, so <laughs> that's that's pretty good. Browser Bench has one more test. Now, this one takes a while, so I'm gonna cut that out in editing. It's called Motion Mark. What's Motion Mark? Well, this one is, uh, 
very heavy on rendering. It says MotionMark is a benchmark designed to put browser graphics systems to the test, and it really pushes them pretty hard. So let's run that one. While the test is running, it's creating these really cool little graphic pictures. It looks like a screensaver, basically. See? Now, from looking at it, they're both running pretty smoothly. They're rendering a ton of stuff. What's going on? Oh, okay. It just switched to a new test. They're running very smoothly, and they seem kind of on par from a visual standpoint. There's no stuttering or anything like that on either one of these machines. So let's see what the score that it gives us at the end, and we can go off of that. I was expecting slightly different results, <sighs> but I guess we get what we get. Now, the Mac Mini gives us a pretty terrible score, 932. By today's standards, uh, just for comparison, Chrome on Apple Silicon gives me around 3,000. So not the best score here. Moving over to Volterra, though, that's... That's pretty bad. 633. So don't expect your graphics to be super snappy on this one. I think, um, yeah, it can handle up to three monitors at the same time, but I haven't tested it yet. I do wonder if there's going to be some kind of slowdown in performance overall when you have three monitors plugged into this thing. The Mac Mini, even though it did better, it will cost you a hundred bucks more than the Volterra box and you get Mac OS plus Windows for ARM if you get Parallels. Link in the description for Parallels if you want to check that out, by the way. And also remember, this is the base model Apple Silicon machine. So they go up from there. Hope this test was useful to you or informative. Give me a thumbs up if it was and consider subscribing for more videos like this. I got more tests on these two machines coming up very soon. I'll be back.